everyone. Welcome back to another Cincinnati Zoo home safari. Um, I know everyone was expecting to see the Arctic Fox this afternoon, but it's a rainy day, so we decided to do a little something inside. And right now you are at um, World of the Insect, behind the scenes. My name is Kelly. I'm one of the keepers here. And we also have April. I'm going to show you something in a second. And today's edition is actually Zoo Babies insects, or actually arachnids, is what we're going to start off with. So we're going to try and get through a couple of things today. Um, as you can imagine, working in insects, um, we have babies all the time. We actually have a lot of babies all the time. So this particular species is one of our emperor scorpions. This is a type of uh, scorpion that is from Africa. It's actually one of the more docile species. This is one of our full-grown females. I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what a full-grown female looks like. Um, one of the things that you'll notice with emperor scorpions that might be a little different from other species that you would see, uh, for example, in the United States, is they have these really big claws up front. Um, uh, emperor scorpions actually don't have a very dangerous sting. They actually use those claws to really clamp down on things. So they have a lot of muscle in there, which is why they're so big. Um, so it makes it easier for them to grab onto prey because they do eat live prey. Uh, the other one that I'm gonna show you is the one that we have that actually has babies with her. And the really cool thing about scorpions is they're actually very good mothers. Um, they take care of their babies for, they can stay with them for actually up to a couple of years. Um, and we have her hidden under this little hide because it's easier for her to protect her babies. And you can see on her, all those little white dots on her back are her babies. Um, typically with emperor scorpions, they can have up to 12 babies at a time. She has five right now. I think there's one kind of hanging off to the side there. Uh, and you'll notice a lot of people ask, well, why are they white and not black like the actual scorpion? When the scorpions actually come out, they actually do come out of eggs which hatch inside of her. They're white in color because their exoskeleton is still soft. So they stay on her back, like you see here, for about two weeks. And at that two week mark, they go through their, what's called their first molt. And that's where they um, will shed that exoskeleton and they'll have that new exoskeleton underneath and they'll actually gain some of that dark color like she has. At that point, they'll crawl off of her back and start wandering around a little bit on their own, but they do still stay close to her. Um, Emperor scorpions are very protective of their young, so she will protect them for quite a while. Uh, as long as they're with her, she'll run over them. They will run to her for protection. They'll hide under her. Um, and she will actually, as she eats, they will eat uh, remnants of things that she eats. For example, crickets. We feed them live crickets here. So um, it's actually pretty cute that we have scorpions that will take, take care of their babies for a time. So they're, again, like I said, this species is not dangerous. Um, the babies, uh, they, their stinger doesn't work very well in the beginning because they're so tiny. And even if they were to try and sting something, um, they would, probably wouldn't penetrate very much because they're so tiny. Ready for some questions? Yeah, any questions? All right, Emily wants to know, do we ever name them? Do we give these names? Do we ever name them? Um, that's actually a really good question. We have tarantulas here that we name. Um, emperor scorpions tend to live anywhere between six to eight years in captivity, but tarantulas, which we have some, not small babies like this, but we have some other babies. Um, tarantulas can live up to about 25, 30 years. So we have them a long time, I think as keepers, we actually do get quite attached to them. So we'll, we tend to name some of the tarantulas that we have. So good question. Violet wanted to know if you're able to handle them. That's a really good question. And April here actually can show you if you'd like um, that emperor scorpions we can handle and occasionally we do for presentations. Yeah. I'll let April take over here. Yeah, so these guys, as adults, they really only use that stinger uh, for defense. So their claws are mainly used for hunting. So even if she is going to sting me though, their venom, it's like a bee sting. It's not bad at all. If you're allergic to it, then it could be an issue, but that's more an allergic reaction than it necessarily is her venom. Well, that's exactly what Madison wondered is this, have you ever been stung by one? Yes, I've been stung and pinched. Um, it happens. 
Um, I'd rather be pinched. Or, no, <laughs> no, I'd rather be stung. Sorry. Yeah, the pinch hurts worse. Eleanor wondered, do they have any predators in the wild? Yeah, they do. Lizards. Um, I wouldn't say snakes. Birds would probably get a hold of them if they could. Larger emperors, depending on how big they are, or other scorpions. Renata wanted to know what states have scorpions in the U.S. Arizona, California, Nevada. Um, so more, of, like you see more of them out west than you would say where we are in Ohio and Kentucky. And they like it pretty hot. And depending on the species, at least what we have in the United States, a little more dry than what it is here. This is a the emperor scorpion is more of a tropical species. And again, this one, this particular one is from Africa, so it's a little different. Joan asked if the babies are able to sting. Uh, their stinger isn't hardened enough to actually penetrate anything. So at the moment, no. And Melania asked, what do they eat? Crickets and other little insects. Uh, we'll give them roaches, crickets. Sometimes we have extra grasshoppers. Pretty much any sort of insect they can come across. Josiah asked, are they endangered? They're threatened, um, mainly because um, they are collected as pets a lot. So there's issues with the pet trade because they are so docile, um, they can be handled. So a lot of people want to get them as pets. Um, Do they make good pets? I, if you know what you're doing, they're not a bad pet. Um, so, I mean, they don't do much. These guys are nocturnal. They like to hide most of the time. She's tolerating me handling her, but it's not something she would prefer most of the time. Um, so it's not a very active pet, but I mean, if you know what they're doing, they are pretty cool. Michael wants to know if they have any teeth. No, they don't. No, they have, uh, I don't know the actual term of it, but when they eat, they have these, and you might be able to see it a little bit. Their mouth parts are pretty much what we call it, um, or these little claws that kind of come out and grasp at prey. So they don't have teeth like we do. They don't, they don't chew the way we do. They grab their prey with their claws, and they'll hold it up to their mouth, and when they're eating, you can actually see it, but all these appendages will come out and just kind of rip the crickets apart, and then their mouth is right in between that. Okay, the last question we have for the scorpions, actually are for you guys, how does one become an insect keeper? Um, I mean, I started out as a, uh, an insect guard, so we have somebody here to take care of our butterflies and watch them to make sure that they don't get out. Um, so I started there and then I started volunteering. So experience is the biggest thing. Um, getting some volunteer experience, internships. Yeah, same for me. I started off um, volunteering and yeah, I mean, that's, that's probably the best way is getting hands-on experience and working in a museum as you say, yeah. Ooh, what else you got for us? So we also have Can some mantids. Come here, you're fine. Awesome. Move that. So these guys, um, a lot of people will call them praying mantis. There's actually about 2,400 species out there. So these guys are from Malaysia. They're not from around here. They're called dead leaf mantids. So these that you're seeing in here are the babies. So I don't know if you can see all the little itty bitty tiny babies. There are a bunch of fruit flies in there, stuff flying around, that's their food. So they prefer stuff that moves, so we have to give them live insects. They're really tiny, so we have to usually do fruit flies when they're first born. These guys actually hatched out of their egg case on the 26th of April. So they're about two weeks old. And they are super tiny. There you go, a little one for you to see. Yeah. So I love mantis because they're very, alert um their vision's really good that's how they catch their prey um that's how they well that's how they see them anyways so they've got their they call them raptorial forelegs is what they'll actually grab their prey with but you can see her looking around and checking everything out i say her she's too young to tell once they do become adults you can tell uh whether they're male or female they're called sexually dimorphic so they actually they look they look different so yeah she popped out of here and out of one egg case um, we had 53 babies come out of it. And she doesn't want to get off. So, egg cases are pretty cool, and sometimes they look similar, actually, to some egg cases from mantids that are around here. So the eggs are actually protected in there. Um, the female lays the eggs, and then she secretes 
almost looks like a styrofoam foam type thing that goes around it. Um, but I mean, I can touch it, it's hardened. So, and they'll lay them and then after about, these guys are about seven to 10 weeks, they'll hatch. And all the 53 of these babies came out of this egg case. And then I've got an adult female. So this is, she's full grown. She is actually the one that laid that egg case that you saw. And they are called dead leaf mantids because if you see how they resemble a leaf to stop predation, they'll fall, usually fall to the ground and then kind of disappear in the leaf litter. And you see her looking around. These guys are neat. And then the males are a lot different. Um, you can tell them they're a lot smaller. I'm only gonna have him out for a second. So that's the male. You can see big difference in size. So the males are pretty good flyers. So I'm gonna put him back so he doesn't fly away mm -hmm. from us. Yeah, they once they're adults, they'll mate after about two to four weeks. And then after anywhere from a week to a month, they'll lay an egg case. And then a couple weeks slash months later, egg case will hatch and then they'll go through, uh, it's about eight to nine molds, depending on if it's a male or female. Since the females get bigger, they go through an extra mold. Declan wants to know, do they have predators? Yes, they do. So these guys can be eaten by um, snakes, lizards, birds, kind of anything that eats insects. Um, yeah, I mean, they're not, they're not above getting eaten by something. <laughs> Isla wants to know, do they bite or sting? Are they venomous? They're not venomous or poisonous. Uh, they don't sting. They can bite. It doesn't, it's not that bad if they bite you. Their biggest defense is their uh, forelegs. So you can see all those like spikes and that's actually what they'll capture their prey in is they'll like squeeze and then hold on to it. But if she gets your fingers in between there, it doesn't feel very good. And you can see her kind of slowly moving back and forth, kind of mimicking a, a leaf in the wind. It's kind of slowly like goes back and forth. Sharon wanted to know, are they able to fly? Yes. Um, the adult females, they're probably a little bit too heavy to fly really well. The males though, um, I mean, they could fly across the room easily. And the males will actually fly and search for females. Madison wants to know, what is their best sense? Uh, their eyesight. So, I mean, you can tell how alert these guys are. I mean, they look at you, they see you, um, they, you can tell when they've spotted prey. Jenna wants to know how long can they live? So these guys aren't too terribly long lived. Um, as adults, this male is um, about five months old right now as an adult. So that's a pretty good lifespan for him. She was, became an adult at the end of February and it takes them about seven months to get there. Um, we got these guys from the San Diego Zoo and they had a female that lived for 17 months total, which is a very long time for these guys. Rachel asked, what do they eat? Anything that moves. So the, <laughs> the, a lot of these guys like um, insects, so flies, fruit flies. Um, we give them grasshoppers, crickets. We'll give them um, hissing cockroaches. Pretty much anything. Some of them can take down vertebrates. We don't ever feed them any, um, but mantids have been known to eat hummingbirds and other small vertebrates if they can get a hold of them. Dylan wants to know how high can they jump? I don't know that she can jump at all. Um, she, I mean, maybe like an inch. It's not 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 very much. She can she might be able to get a little lift with flying, but like I said, the males do fly, so I mean, he can fly as high as he wants. Um, Adeline wants to know, do they eat each other? They can. Um, cannibalism is pretty common with these guys. Um, they are predators, so anything they see that moves, even if it's possibly one of their siblings, that's an issue. Um, a lot of times with mating, you know, a lot of people are concerned that the female is going to eat the male, and that happens in about 25 to 50% of the times that they mate. But, I mean, this male has mated before, and he's doing just fine. <laughs> so it doesn't always happen. Um, and usually if we keep the, keep the females well fed, the, they usually tend not to eat the males. And that's also why you see in the cage too, um, there's a ton of fruit flies. There's more fruit flies than there are uh, babies, 
when there are baby mantids, and that's to make sure that they don't eat each other. What is the reasoning? Do, you, do we know the reasoning why they would eat the male? Um, opportunity. I mean, he's smaller than her. Um, he's right up, you know, against her and close where she, she can see him. So, I mean, I'm guessing it's more of an opportunistic thing than anything. Amber wanted to know, are they endangered? Uh, not that I'm aware of with these guys. Okay, and our last question for them is, are they good climbers? Yeah. Yeah, they're very good climbers. I mean, a lot of times, like, I mean, she can hang on pretty well. They can climb on the glass. You got all the babies climbing on the glass. Uh, a lot of times they'll hang upside down on screening in their, in their habitats. All right. So thanks for visiting us at World of the Insect today, guys. If you can click on the link, there's an activity for you guys to do. So you guys can have some fun with some sort of activity while we sit here and play with bugs. <laughs>